Come on, church. Let's get to our feet. Come on. There's freedom, freedom in Jesus. Freedom, Come on. Come on. Freedom, Step out of your seat. Raise your hands. Surrender in the sight of Jesus. There's freedom. There's freedom in Jesus. He'll remove those shackles. He'll remove those chains. Come on, church. Come on, church, you gotta help me preach this tonight. I'm gonna need to hear you. You gotta remove those shackles, those chains, those things that bind you. Hallelujah. Come on, shout it out. No more shackles, no more chains. Get rid of those shackles tonight. I am free. There's no more bondage. They're on Facebook. Get out of your chairs. Come on, hallelujah. No more shackles, no more chains. If no you're bound to the world, I am it's going to get released tonight. You got to yeah. believe it. You got to want it. You got to want that change. Say hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, shout for Jesus. Shout his name. That's how you get set free. You speak it. You gotta bring your troubles out of existence by speaking his name. Hallelujah, say no more, no more shackles. Come on, release it. No more Release it. I am free. No more bondage tonight. You're gonna be set free by the blood and the power of Jesus. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I believe God's going to speak to you tonight. I believe the Spirit of God is here. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Oh, hallelujah. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Oh! Yeah. We're going to be set free tonight. Woo! Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Give God a hand clap. Let's give him more. That's why we're here. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a Friday night. I said, it's a Friday night. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful. That's why I get loud. Because I'm grateful for what God's done for my life. I'm grateful for the honor to be up here behind Pastor James's pulpit. Not my pulpit. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can take your seat. Hallelujah. I'm going to need you to help me preach this tonight. I need some amens. I need some hallelujahs. Because who knows? How many know that we're here for Jesus? The last time I was behind this pulpit, I, I spoke about God didn't have a backup plan for you. And I spoke about three people. And I started to speak about Jesus, and I noticed my time ran out. So tonight, God has spoken to me to talk to you about the risen Son, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. His name is Jesus. I'm here to speak to you tonight about how to be set free from your bondage. God wants to set each and every one of us free. Amen. So tonight I'm going to go right into to my main scripture. If you guys can just go ahead and put that picture up tonight. I want you to look at that picture tonight. I want it to manifest. I want it, I'm going to leave it up there the whole night because it will all come together at the end. But I want you to picture that. I'm going to go to the book.
book of Matthew tonight. My opening scripture is going to be this. I'm going to pray. Father, I come before your throne tonight, God, just a, a humble servant, God, a humble peasant, God. Not even worthy, God, to be up here, God. God, I'm not worthy to speak your word. But you asked me, God. You spoke it to me, God. And I ask you to help me to relay this message to your people, God. God, a message about your son, Jesus. A message about what he had to go through, God, to deliver us from our sin, God. God, help, help them to open their minds up, God. Clear their minds, God. Open their hearts up to receive tonight, God, in the name of Jesus right now. And everybody said tonight, amen, hallelujah. Amen. The book of Matthew, chapter 7. You could all turn there. I'll give you a moment because it's important. You need a highlighter. Y'all there? Amen. There on Facebook, are you there? Because God's going to speak tonight. I believe it. I come expecting. I come surrendered for God to use me and the Holy Spirit to speak to you. 21 through 23, Matthew 7. 21 says this. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only the ones, only, the, but the only one who does the will of the Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and drive out demons in your name, performing many miracles? 23 says, then I will tell you, then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me. What? You're evil doers. You evil doers. Back in Jesus' day, he was talking to his disciples. He was telling the, the disciples thought they were just going to make it to heaven because they were doing the work of God. Because they just thought that they were just going to be able to make it. But God, Jesus is telling them here, Jesus is telling the disciples, there's much more to it. There's much more to making it to heaven than just preaching and casting out demons and this and that. And, you know, Jesus spoke harshly to some people, if you look at it. Jesus told the disciples, it doesn't matter what you do. If you don't walk righteous, if you don't walk upright. If you don't do what I ask, you ain't going to make it. Just because you're over there in that city casting out demons and you're doing performing miracles in my name doesn't make you fit for the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of heaven. Amen? Are you with me? I don't want to lose you because this might get deep and that's okay. God's word, that's what God said. Amen? This scripture today, how, how, how does it apply to us? Today, I believe it is talking to the Christian. Back then, it was God, Jesus was talking to the disciples. When we read this scripture today, I believe it's talking to the Christian who thinks they're going to make it to heaven. Yet they're not living the way Jesus taught us to live. Are you with me? Jesus taught us how to live. The title of my message, which way are you going? You're going to hell or you're going to heaven? It's cut and dry. The scripture is pretty, pretty plain. Tonight I want to talk to you about who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Jesus 
was a man that was prophesied about. At least 44 times in the Old Testament, from Genesis to Malachi. Almost every book of the Old Testament, Jesus was talked about, prophesied. I got notes tonight, bear with me. <laughs> in Genesis, the Messiah, it said, they prophesied the Messiah would be born of a woman. That's in Genesis 3, 5. Another prophecy in the Old Testament was that the Messiah would be born of a virgin. That was in Isaiah 7, 14. Another one, the Messiah would be a sacrifice for sin. That was in Isaiah 53, verses 5 through, through 12. Another one, the Messiah would be crucified with criminals on the cross. Isaiah 53, 12. Another prophecy was the Messiah would be resurrected from the dead. That's in Psalms 16.10. Those prophecies came through in the book of Matthew. Those prophecies all came through in the book of Matthew. Jesus was born of a virgin. The Virgin Mary. His father was Joseph. Could you imagine Joseph? His to-be wife was pregnant. How could that be? How could that be? Jesus was hated by the king at birth. The king set out people to, to kill the, the chosen one because he was afraid. He was afraid. That king was afraid because he was called to be the Messiah, the chosen one of God. Jesus was approximately 32 to 33 years old. He walked around later in life as he got in his 30s. He walked around pe preaching and teaching, giving instruction. For three years. He had a ministry for three years. Jesus took on the sins of the world for you and I. For those of us that are lost, those of us that didn't have no hope, Jesus took that on. Jesus died on that cross for you. He died on that cross for me. God sent me here to tell you about his son Jesus tonight. Let me share this with you. No individual has had a greater impact on human history than the name Jesus Christ. No one, no other name has had a bigger impact on a world, on this world, than the name of Jesus Christ. Not only was it in the Old Testament, but it's in the New Testament, and it's still here today, 2,021 years later. His name is still here. His name is still being brought up. Three years of ministry. Three. He made an impact on the world. In just three short years, this humble carpenter challenged, enlightened, transformed those around him with words of wisdom, grace, truth, Hope, and most importantly, love. Most importantly, love. The name of Jesus didn't just impact the lives of the people around him at the time, but he is still transforming lives today. Still, 2,021 years later. Can you, can you imagine? I'm 51 years old, and I've done nothing for Jesus. 
I'll be straight up honest. This man impacted not just his generation, his world at the time, but he's impacting our generation right now. Because we're here because of, the, because of Jesus Christ. We're here sitting in this place, Victory Outreach Tri-Cities, because of Jesus Christ. The man... Come on, I need your help to preach this tonight. I need your help. Because God wants you to hear. God wants you to hear what he has for you. I don't know about you, but I don't know if you remember about three years ago, three and a half years ago, Pastor put on, a, on, a, on, on Facebook for us to all watch this, this little thing on Francis Chan. How many know who Francis Chan is? He spent about 14 minutes in this little preaching. And his preaching was, most Christians, hear me, most Christians are going to go to hell. Most Christians are going to go to hell. Why is that? Why do you believe that is? I'm here tonight to show you wow. I'm here to show tonight to show you that it's not okay to twist that bubble. It's not okay to smoke that cigarette. Maybe I'm just preaching to myself tonight, but In this little preaching, Francis Chan showed, uh, ch challenged the ones he was speaking to, which is anybody on YouTube or whatever it, that little thread was. He challenged you. Get a red letter edition of the Bible and read the words in red. I'm here to tell you tonight the words in red. Or what leads you to heaven? Those words in red are the voices of the king of kings. The Lord of lords. Those words in red. Need to be embedded in your heart. I'm asking you tonight. Have you read the words in red? Have any of you read the words in red? If not, I challenge you to do it. I have spent three and a half years stuck in that. That challenge of reading the words in red. It's in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. Words of red. Get a red letter edition of the Bible and read it. Jesus didn't say, it's okay, brother, to smoke that cigarette. No, he said, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me. <laughs> You brood of vipers. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Do you try to live by the words of red? There's books out there. There's books out there. Red letter living. Red letter living. Wow. Man, I started diving into this deeper and deeper and deeper over the years and more so in the last month. Because I feel it in my heart that God wants you to know something. God wants every one of you to make it to heaven. And I, and I believe you've been deceived. I don't want you to be deceived that it's okay to sin because Jesus didn't say it. If he didn't speak it, then how can it be? If Jesus spoke it, then you better listen. He died for you. Jesus tells us how we are supposed to live through those words of red. The words that he spoke, he, 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 he tells us in detail, in parables, and all this stuff. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go through the book of Matthew a little bit, so bear with me, because it's important. Say it's important. It's important that God has something for you tonight. It's important that you hear. Because I'm just a vessel up here. I can't do this without the Spirit of God in my life. 
I couldn't do this without fasting and prayer. Because I want God to use me. Because I'm tired of being stuck out there. I'm tired of being stuck with that needle in my arm. I'm tired. I was tired when I went to that men's home. Matthew 5.20 For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you certainly, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Back in the day, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were it. They taught you everything. They, they told you everything. He's saying here that if you're not above that level in your spirituality and what you're doing with your life, and you're still living in sin, basically, then you're not going to make it to heaven. He said it right there. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law tried to live blameless. He's saying that if you can't live at that level, you, it's, it's in red. You, certainly you were not going to make it to the kingdom of heaven. What? What? But that's the words of God. That's the words of Jesus. We need to take it into our heart. How we need to live our lives. Because I was out there in the world and I, I didn't live right. <laughs> I didn't do people right. Also in, the, in chapter 5, Jesus talks about murder how he feels about murder, how he feels about adultery, how he feels about divorce, oaths. If you make an oath with God, that's between you and God. You better not break it. He talks about it. It's all in red, people. It's all in red. Matthew 5, 48, or 43 through 48, tells us the love to love our enemies. Wait a minute, it's in red, 44. Jesus says, but I tell you, love your enemy and pray. Pray for those that come against you and persecute you. Pray for them. Lift up your enemy in prayer. God will deliver them like he delivered you and set you free. Pray for them. Are you doing that? Because if you're not, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. It's in red. It's in red. <laughs> Matthew 6 tells us about prayer, fasting, storing up our treasures. Matthew 6, 25 through 33. Jesus says, do not worry. <laughs> do not worry. Man, I'm a worry wart. I still worry if I'm going to make it to heaven. says, do not worry. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow nor or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than them? What he's saying is, don't worry about how you're going to make finances. Don't worry about how you're going to get clothes on your back. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Because if you're living a righteous life and you're living for Jesus and you hold the commands of what Jesus told you, you don't have to worry about nothing because God's got your back. How do you know? Because if you're doing God's business, he takes care of your business. I'm here to tell you like the Bible says, not what I said. And I'm here to let God use me tonight. So I hope it's not too harsh. Matthew 7 teaches us about judging others. Talks about ask, seek, and knock. I'm just kind of skimming over the, the book of Matthew and the words in red. You can go back and read them yourself because I don't want you to think this is Albert made up. This is the words of Jesus. Your provider. Your healer. The man that saved your life. The man that rescued you.
Here's a big one. My second key scripture is this. It's found in Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Here again, Jesus tells us something very, very important. You need to highlight it. 7, 13 through 14. Jesus tells us to enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many Christians enter through it. I put that in there. I put the Christian in there. I'll tell you, I put that in there because God asked me to. He spoke it through me. But he says, but small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life. And only... Only a few find it. It's in red. Did I, did I point that out? It's, it's in red. Jesus spoke it. And you know, it just said the gate in, in that one scripture. There's nothing else that goes with that little scripture. It's just plain as day. It's plain as day that most people live in sin and they're going to go to hell. It's plain as day that to live free of sin is not easy, but we want to strive for that. We want to achieve that. We want to walk like Christ. We want to look like Christ. We want to project our lives like Christ. Why? So that next person coming in that door that's twisted and tore up can see the light of Jesus in us and they want what we have. Now we're back to the opening scripture. <laughs> Matthew 7, 21 through 23. I don't want to go over all the words in red because there's many, many, many of them. Like I said, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. The words are red. And I'm challenging you tonight. I'm going to challenge every one of you. To get you a red letter edition of the Bible or get you just the words in red. There's books, just the words in red. Red letter living. Take that stuff in. Read it. Dwell in it. Because your life depends on it. Your life depends on it. Your salvation depends on it. Your walk depends on it. That person that looks at you depends on it. Because those words in red are our ticket to heaven. Those, ticket, those, those words in red are the words of our Savior. Are you still looking at it? These are just a few verses. In red, the word spoken by our Savior. He, can, he continues through the book of Matthew, teaching, he, about, and, and he's teaching. I'm kind of skipping ahead. You know, farther in the, in, in, in the book of Matthew, 10, 11, 12, 13, he's, he starts healing people. He starts talking in parables, but it's still in red. You got to look at it. It's still in red. The parables in red are for a reason. In chapter 8, Jesus heals a man of leprosy. We're still, I'm still trying to paint a picture of who this man Jesus is in your life, for your life. In, in chapter 8, Jesus heals a man of leprosy, heals many, calms a storm by his voice. Restores two demon-possessed men. That's all in the, in, in the chapter 8. Go, you, can, you can read it later. In chapter 9, Jesus forgives and heals a paralyzed man. I'm trying to paint a picture. This man, Jesus, had the power to forgive and heal a paralyzed man. 
that was stuck on the side. He couldn't do nothing for himself. But Jesus just merely reached out and told him, get up. Your sins are forgiven. That's the power of Jesus. That's the power of Jesus. Jesus is God's chosen servant. Chosen by God. In chapters, chapter 12, verse 18, it says this. Here is my servant who I choose, the one I love, and whom I delight. That's what God says about Jesus. Do you think Jesus is important? Let me ask you again. Do you think Jesus is important? If he's chosen by God and he speaks in red, those words in red need to be embedded. What happened in chapter 14? Jesus walked on water. Jesus walked on water? Wow, that's some power. That's the only power that comes from God. He told Peter, don't be afraid. That's in red. Don't be afraid. Chapter, as I read these things, ask yourself, do I do them? Do I do those? Because if I do those, I need to repent. Remember that. Chapter 18 of Matthew. We're still in Matthew. Chapter 18, 6 and 9. 6 through 9. Causing somebody to stumble. This is in red, people. This is in red, church. Chapter 6 says this, or verse 6 says, If anyone causes one of these little ones, who are the little ones? Those who believe in Jesus. Those who believe in God. If anyone causes one of these little ones to stumble, it would be better for them to tie a big old rock around their neck, jump off a bridge, and drown. Are you making your brother and sister stumble? Are you causing anybody grief in your life? Do some soul searching tonight. It's in red. It says it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea to make it what he said. I paraphrased it. For our generation. The next one is chapter 22 of Matthew. 37 and 39. This is the greatest and most foremost command. And it's in red. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. That's 37. 38 says this, this is the first and greatest commandment, 39, and the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself, it's in red, if we're not loving our neighbor, if we're coming against our neighbor, our brother, our sister, in Christ, guess what, Eh, he might be burning, I'm telling you, it's in red. These are the words of your Savior. These are the commands that he gave so we could make it to heaven. I don't know about you, but I want to make it to heaven. I dive into this because this is what's going to get me there. I want to learn about it. I want to teach about it. I want to preach about it. God called every one of us. Called every one of us. To be the lamp to somebody else. Every one of us. It's 
to sum it up, to sum up who Jesus is, he is the son of God. He was chosen by God, by God to stand in the gap for our sins. He was chosen by God. <laughs> With that said, these words in red need to be embedded in our hearts. These words of Jesus tell us how to live our life. Every aspect of our lives are in the words of red. Francis Chan challenged everybody, cut everything else out. Just read the words in red. Jesus didn't pat nobody on the back when it comes to sin. <laughs> he didn't tell you it was okay. He didn't tell you it's okay to cuss. I'm here to tell you that the, the word of God is like a two-edged sword. It cuts going in and out. And I'm here to tell you that God wants you to live right. He wants you to live like Jesus asked you to live because Jesus represents God. And the Holy Spirit Represents God and Jesus in you. Whew, it gets deep. The words in red get deep. I'm not even, I've just scratched the surface with you tonight. I've just scratched the surface. I'm going to ask you one more time. Search your heart. I'm going to ask you again. Do we take the words that Jesus spoke to our heart and try to live by them? Or do we have some type of hidden sin that we're not talking about? Do we have some type of hidden sin that Jesus comes against in, in, his, in his words of red? We need to dig in our hearts tonight. We can't have hidden sin. Hidden sin is going to keep you from the glory of God. Hidden sin is going to take you to hell, Christians. I'm here to tell you that. If you really dive into the words of red, it tells you that itself plainly. We must live righteous. We must live for God. Are we doing things... Against what God wants for our lives? If we are, then hell is our destination. Hell is our destination. I'm here to tell you that. Are you going to heaven or hell tonight? You need to search your soul. Soul. I want to make it to heaven. I want to see everyone in here make it to heaven. Pastor wants to see every one of us in here to make it to heaven. That's why he surrendered his life for us. Our pastor gave up everything to help each and every one of us drug addicts, each and every one of us gang members, each and every one of us that are lost and bound. He gave it up so we could come here and find Jesus, have a relationship with Jesus. That's why. Jesus was clear in, our, in his words. Please don't be deceived, church. I'm asking you, don't be deceived by the world. Don't be deceived by Satan who prowls around like a roaring lion right on your tail. Because if you're in Victory Outreach, the devil's right there. He's right there. You need to be prayed up. You need to be seeking God. You need to be reading the red letters in red. You need to be on your knees casting out whatever the devil has for you. How do you do it? The words of red, it gives you, explains everything, how to do everything, how to pray. The words in red will lead you down the right road. You won't go wrong. Jesus was. Jesus was beaten. Jesus was whipped. Jesus was stoned, dragged, spit on, cursed. Picture it. Picture it. This takes us to the cross. 
For Jesus bear all your sins. I don't know about you, but the words I read impacted my life. It's transformed my life. It takes us to the cross. Let's talk about that cross that Jesus carried on his back for you, for me. Let's talk about that cross as he was beaten, hurt, cut up, stoned, spit on, cursed. Because he was trying to help you and I. I'm here to tell you, church, we're here for Jesus. Jesus had nails. He was drugged to that cross. He was held down. They drove his nails into his hands. They drove nails through his feet. They stood that cross up so he could be seen by all. Can you see it? Then Jesus was stabbed in the side and left for dead. And then the world shook. Because he's the son of God. Those people and the people in those days got to witness this. They got to see it. We get to believe it in our hearts. 2,021 years later, it's still in the mist. His name is still above all names. Still glorified above everything. The raising of the cross, the stabbing, being on a hill, it's all called the crucifixion. He was crucified. They crucified him. I'm here to tell you today, if Jesus walked in, we'd crucify him again. Because we don't have belief in our heart. We don't have no faith. We want to live in sin. We want to do our own thing. He could stand right here and say, I'm the son of God. And he's hanging back on that cross. He won't come back in the flesh. This is what happened next, church. They took him off that cross. They put him in this tomb. They rolled this big old rock in, in front of it. The man God put on the earth to represent himself, to teach us how to live our lives, we put on a cross. We beat him, stoned him, spit on him, cursed him. It'll break your heart. It breaks mine. It breaks my heart. But when the rock was rolled away, the tomb was empty. Because he had the power of God behind him. So when you believe in Jesus, you got the power of God. You can move that stone. You can move that mountain. You can remove that needle from your arm. You can remove that pipe from your mouth. Resurre resurrection took place. The man... In history, he's the man in history that rose from the grave. That has impacted generation after generation after generation after generation. He sits at the right hand of God, interceding for you and I. That was his purpose. He intercedes for our sins. When it's our time, he's right there. But he's not right there if you haven't lived by his words and read. He's not right there. You're behind me. I don't know you. He told that to the disciples, the ones that followed him close, the ones that heard his teachings, the ones that knew what he was talking about. 
if I can get the worship team. I don't know if this stood out to anybody tonight, but the words of red are a life changer. The words of, of red are how you're supposed to live your life. This man died for you. Who are we? Who are we to continue down that same road? Who are we? We as a church? We got this drama coming. And we get to tell Jesus' story. And I don't know about you, but to be up here and to be a part of it, to, to show what Jesus went through, to show what Jesus has done for me, for you, it's going to be powerful. You need to support it. You need to invite people. stand tonight I don't know if it was too harsh but I, I'm just here to, to relay a message and if you're wondering about this picture right here through all this through everything he went through through everything he went through He's still there listening to you because that's the love of Jesus in your life. I wanted you to dwell on it, wondering, what does that mean? What does that mean, brother? That means in the midst of your trouble, in the midst of your storm, he's still there listening. He's still there for you to call upon. Even when you reject him, even when you don't live right, because that's why he died for the, on the cross. That's why he rose again. That's why there was resurrection. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I'm just opening this altar tonight. If you need to come to Jesus and you need to speak to him about not living righteous and not living the way he asked, then you need to repent tonight. You need to take it to Jesus right here at the altar. This altar's open. Oh, have your way, Lord. The more of you, be less of me. The more of you, be less of me. And more of you, and more of you. Jesus. To have more of Jesus is to live right. To live by the red words. to him even in the midst of all the thorns the beatings the lashings he's still listening he's still gonna hear that cry
by God's standards, I want to throw out an invitation. I just would like you to repeat after me this evening. If you haven't lived the way God wants you to live and you feel in your heart that you want to live better and do a better thing, then just cry out to Him in prayer. Repeat after me tonight. Father God, I know I'm a sinner. Father, I know that I haven't walked the way you want me to walk. I know I've done some things that only you know about, God. God, I come before you and I ask you to forgive me tonight. Forgive me of those things, Lord. Forgive me, God. Cry out to him, church. Ask you to forgive you. Ask you, God, ask him to forgive you. Ask you, ask him to forgive you tonight. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, let God move in your heart. Let God touch your spirit right now. He wants you to reach out to him. He wants you to surrender. I don't know about you, but I need more of Jesus. I need more righteousness. I need more walk right with God. I need more light to be that light. Because I know he's my provider, my deliverer. And he's the one that set me free. Jesus set me free. He didn't just deliver me. I'm here to tell you, he set me free from drug addiction. He set me free from anger. And he did that because I searched their words and read and believe them. Try to live my life like that. I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Only Jesus was perfect. But if I feel I'm doing something wrong, I, I, I'm quick to re repent. Quick to ask for forgiveness. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. No place I'd rather hallelujah. be. No place There's no better I'd place be. than in the presence of Jesus. No place There's I'd no better place be than, than for God to be able to speak to you. You gotta stay no surrendered. Place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. I can tell you there's no better place than in the arms of Jesus in your crisis. In the arms of Jesus in the midst of your pandemic. In the midst of your struggle. He's there for you. That's why he died on that cross. This works of Jesus. Come on. To set a fire down in my soul. Here I am, Lord, take control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. So set a fire down in my soul. Here I am, Lord, take control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. So set a fire down in my soul. Here I am, Lord, take control. I want more of you, God. I want more, more of you, and less of me. More of you, and less of me, and more of you. More of you, yes. More of you, and less of me. More of you, and less of me, and more. Oh! 
like never before, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Before I close out, I just want you, I just want to continue to throw out that challenge to read their words in red. They will penetrate the deep of the heart. And if we're doing something that goes against those words in red, we better search and ask for forgiveness. We better search and ask God to change and transform that. Because you'll do it. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Father God, we come before you this evening. God, I just want to thank you, God, for this opportunity to share, God, what your son has done for us. What he's done in our lives the sacrifice that he did, the servant that he was, Lord. Thank you, God, that you used me as a tool and a vessel. Father, I just ask that you embed your words of red in the hearts of your people tonight. Father, don't let them go home the same, God, but let them go in, God. Let them go home, God, with that in their thought, that what they need to change, that what they need to work on, God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church. Everybody, thank Jesus. Let's give him a hand clap tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. No more, no more.